what is going on guys it's your boy Cecil here bring us in a photoshop tutorial brings that cool little abstract backing designs tutorial so basically today i'm going to be teaching you how to help you like start your designs i know if you guys don't know what the word like the the, the quote-unquote word backings is i use it as like a way of saying like um like the background of like your design like the 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 placeholder for whatever your project is doing what you know what i'm trying to say like basically the back of your design i have examples here in a second i'll show you in a second but i saw someone mentioned on twitter and i was like yeah i, I think that's a really great idea because i i do these backings all the time for you know clients and such and i never really show how to do that unless i'm doing something very simple and like you know it's whatever i've been doing a lot of clean work lately but you know sometimes people needed some help with some you know maybe abstract design or something like that so if i can get you that you give you that idea so i have examples here i have just three simple examples here um by the way all these can be changed and i'll show you guys all these cool little ways you can make it look awesome like here's one it's very simple it's very very simple to do it's just basically overlapping shapes on one another with lower opacity so that's one right here and i have another one that looks like this it looks pretty cool like it, it's so simple to do and it's frustrating when i see people you know it, i can see that people struggle with backing so i'm going to definitely show them how to do it right here right now and also you can make some very cool designs with this kind of stuff so you can see this one as well looks very uh, cool so basically I'm gonna show you guys this right away let's go right into it um so pretty much all you're gonna need is nothing actually actually what I say that you actually need nothing at all um to pretty much start this so basically I'm gonna make a new layer I'm gonna start this off and pretty much all I'm gonna be using is the pen tool and duplicating the layer so p on my keyboard or press p on your keyboard <laughs> not p on your keyboard um so yeah I wonder not nah, I'm gonna say it um, so basically the pen tool right here, right, of course, when you press P and your keyboard, that's a shortcut for it. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a rhombus or like some kind of like rectangular shape as I did before, something like that, right? And I know I'm doing this, I just pen tooled a random shape, I didn't try to make it perfectly straight or whatever. If you want to use like a, a hexagon or some kind of shape that you already know of that you can pen tool out perfectly or you have like a shape in like wherever you have it at, um, if you want to use that, that's perfectly fine. Different shapes equals different, you know, outcome in the, you know, the, uh, the long, you know, process or whatever. So pretty much, I have this here. It's just very simple, obvious shape, right? Of course, I know, I know, I, I did, I, I did pen tool it outside of the canvas. So it's obviously when I fill it in, it's gonna only be like this right here, which is perfectly fine. Also, it's gonna have like a little cut. I don't care. I don't really mind. I, I want to have a little def like deformation maybe in the shape. It'll give, it'll give me a cooler look to it. So pretty much on this new layer. Uh, when I have this uh, path connected, by the way, if you guys have no clue how to use the pen tool, basically there's a start point, which is when you click once, and then if you just click again, you click again, you click again, wherever you go, even if you made a shape like this, let's say if you're completely new to the pen tool and you have no clue how to use it, if you just did something crazy like this, right, and then connect it at the end, at least as long as you connect the shape, you're ready to do the next step, which is basically uh, right-clicking, fill path, when you have the pen tool still out, right, you're going to drop down, use color, you can just uh, click all the way, just drag all the way uh, to the left, to bottom left to use black, or you can just basically go to use and then just go ahead and go to black and then press OK. So now pretty much you have the shape here, and now you can right click delete path by the way. You have the shape here, right? I move it around, you can see it's there. I'm going to leave it here for now because that's where my starting point wants to be for now. So basically I'm going to take this new layer and I'm going to just lower my opacity from 100 to about maybe 60%. So what this is going to have me do is when I duplicate this layer, what I'm going to do right now, I'll hold Alt. Uh, this is my shortcut to duplicate uh, the layer, so holding Alt, and if I just left click and move it, of course, um, you can actually see it makes a duplicate of it, so you don't have to press Control J. If you want to do Control J over and over and over again, that's perfectly fine to duplicate your layer. So basically just, you know, on your selected layer, uh, you can just press Control J, and it'll make a duplicate again. You just have to move it with regularly uh, this little tool right here. Um, so pretty much, when you do this, you can see since your opacity is 60%, it's going to basically have these two shapes, of course, combined opacity so maybe this would be like a you know whatever percentage more i wouldn't really want to say 120 uh, percent because i know what adding them would make that sense but if i duplicate it again it will keep layering and it looks pretty cool if you get cooler shapes or whatever i'm just going to do it like random i'm not going to go crazy with it uh it looks pretty okay so it's very abstract see right now right here i'm done so basically i just want to duplicate it, duplicate it a couple times so that it goes whatever it can go diagonal it can go straight down i just did a diagonal just because i did it before and it looked pretty good so pretty much I'm pretty much set, right? If you did this, you like, you know, what what's now? I, it doesn't look like anything at the, the end point. So pretty much, I'm going to hold, uh, just click on this top layer. I'm going to hold shift, click on my bottom layer, so that way everything in the middle gets connected or clicked as well. So pretty much, I can press control G. That way it duplicates all my layers together. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. And then pretty much, I'm going to make duplicates of this. So I'm going to press control J, make a duplicate of it, and I'm just going to drag it, just like so. I just simply you see I just dragged it. I, I can also just use alt and drag as well if you don't want to use control J there we go I have, it's more it's a it's a really weird shape because I didn't really like space the uh, 
the opacity is not right, but it's going to be all good, I, all good, because I can make it look good no matter what in a second, or make it look decent at least, not good, you know, I'm not a magician, but pretty much I'm going to just group these together again, and then now I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to like make it look like it's more of a background, more ready to get, you know, used for a background, see right now it's very, it's very bumpy, the feeling you get is very bumpy, so I'm going to do is I'm going to get exposure, so pretty much I'm going to go to my adjustments tab down here, and I'm going to go to where it says exposure, and I'm going to fix this a little bit, so I'm going to just change my exposure, you can always just set this for like maybe 0.80 or so, which is pretty good, and then this is all by the eye, you know, usually, it depends also if, as well if you change your opacity lower than mine, but if, that, if that's at 60, it should be like the same, almost the same setting, so if you want to copy the same settings, you should, or you could, excuse me, um, so I'm just going to mess with my offset just for now, I'm just going to move it up a little bit, just for now, I'm going to go to my gamma, I'm going to fix this, and now at any moment, by the way, you can always go back, because I'm going to probably have to go back to fix this, but for now, I think that looks pretty good. Basically, you can see what I'm talking about, how it's no longer bumpy. It's more flat, kind of, and ready for, like, a background. Not really, like, you know, like, looks like like crap, I guess. Basically, look, look at this. It doesn't look correct, but if you look at this, you're like, oh, I get where this is probably going now, maybe. But basically, you're going to need more color, of course. You're going to need color. So the whole thing about this is all you got to do is you go to your solid shapes again, or your, uh, excuse me, you go to your adjustments tab, you go to solid color, you click on that, and then pretty much you can click any color you want, um, you can be any color on the spectrum, of course, but just click around here, so it's like in the middle section over here. That way it's a darker tone color, because what we're going to do is we're going to change the um, blend mode from normal to darker. So once you get this color here, I'll just use like this right here for now. Press OK, and I'm going to change this from normal to darker, which is right like somewhere. I know, I, or darken, is it darken, or is it darker? It's darken, it has to be darken, right? Yeah, it's darken. So, pretty much you have this here, Now I think my exposure needs to be fixed. Um... Maybe like something like that. that. Looks a little bit better. You can see where I'm going here. It looks better than this. It's basically it looks more flat and ready for a back. And like I said before, so pretty much you have this done. This is basically the final outcome. You would you know say like what's wrong with this? It probably doesn't look like what I want it. Uh, you probably have to go back and duplicate layers or differently. But pretty much if you want to get different outcomes, you can just basically call this group one. We're just gonna duplicate this with Control J again. So this will be a backup, so I can just basically control E on this layer, which will merge all the layers that are inside this group together. So control E, there we go. And then pretty much, I'm just going to fiddle around with blurs. So uh, filter, blur, and motion blur. I can check out motion blur and get these cool little, like, you know, motion blur abstract lines for a start maybe. Uh, like somewhere like this, looks pretty cool, whatever. I can change the diagonal, or right, direction, excuse me, the angle. So if I just put it up here, you get these cool little, like, Maybe a simplistic, you know, startup ready. It's just, it's so simple to do. It's in, like, look at that. It looks really cool. Like, you can't lie. It's just simply changing the direction and using motion blur and then just basically using the shape that you duplicated as like a starting point. So, pretty much that's a thing. I think that looks really cool. I, I'm actually going to probably, you know, hopefully I can watch this back and be like, yo, how did I do that before? I probably won't remember. Although, I, I really is just basically change the angle. So, maybe I would remember. Um, so, also, you can do as well is you can go to filter liquify you can use liquify as well just with the simple what is this like the 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 forward wrap tool so the first tool here i'm just going to mess around with it a little bit that's a little bit too much just mess around with it just a bit just like so you can see it just looks whatever it looks abstract it looks cool if i press ok it looks like this you can't lie it looks pretty cool as well but what this did was basically set up like like i almost did like a completely different shape and i completely made it different so if i just also go back to here uh i can use maybe gaussian blur would that look okay I mean, uh, not really. I would say motion blur. Stick with motion blur for now. Um, you can see it looks. It looks. It gives it a different look to it. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, I like that. It's, it's. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know. I'm just thinking of so many ideas right now. So hopefully, I gave you guys some ideas. Like the whole point is just trying to show you guys how to start your project. It can be as simple as doing something like this. Um, I think it's. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed the video though. Um, so pretty much that would be it for me. I would just go with that. And then I would start off my design. So I would go with probably always, I always like to start off for some reason. I always do like the outline, like a little backlight thing. I basically just select the entire canvas with like the, uh, the marquee tool. I go to select, modify, border. Three pixels is fine. Uh, pickles. Three pixels is fine. And since I already have white as my foreground color, I just press alt backspace to quick fill. Control D to deselect. And then pretty much just put this on an overlay. And I'm pretty much ready to go and get started. It's just, that's how I kind of like start off my backgrounds. If I were to have to do any like color, uh, colored backgrounds, it looks pretty cool. 
So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I hope I at least taught you guys maybe some kind of idea to actually get started with backings. And hopefully you guys can understand that I just did this because, of course, someone mentioned it on Twitter. And like I said, I think it was a very good idea because, you know, some people struggle with backings. You know, why not? The last one I did was like forever ago. And it was probably like just me telling you guys to use a solid shape and then like a, a burst of color. So... Hope you guys understood the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, guys. Do not forget to follow me on Twitter at SissyHQ. Also, don't forget to check my Selfie, Selfie.com slash SissyHQ for any pre mades and packs. It's always $5. My brush pack, it's pretty awesome, I would say. <laughs> brush pack, 10 out of 10. Um, so, yeah, also the everything pack, $30. For one purchase of $30, you get everything in my store uh, for one uh, one price, which is $30. And everything that comes out for free will be emailed to you. Or anything that comes out will be emailed to you for free. So, it's a pretty great deal, to be honest. You never know. I think that, like, the value of my self eye right now with all the products is, like, $170. So, you're saving a lot of money. So, it's pretty cool. And you get stuff for free afterwards. Like, what the hell? Anyway, thank you guys so much. So, don't forget to uh, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. I'm going to go head out and go do some stuff. I don't know how many of you guys like got homework to do or whatever, if you guys are in college or not, but my class has started. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be fun. I really, I, I can't wait, honestly. So peace to switch you out. Later.